What up, everybody? Welcome to Sacred Odyssey. Yeah. The most beloved podcast in the world. Number one. <laughs> number one, baby, in Zambia, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we're Not gonna number one, but true story, we are rated number, what was it, seven in the country of Zambia. That's really? exciting. Yeah. So. We were rated number like four in religious and spirituality topics, and then overall, we were number 12 in the whole country. Wow. Let's go to Zambia. Yeah. Get so one shout viewer. out to Zambia <laughs> yeah. for the communities of people out there streaming Sacred Odyssey. There you go. It's probably like one person. <laughs> Just over and over and over again. Uh, so welcome to Sacred Odyssey. We got a beautiful episode for you today uh, that we're going to dive right into and, and get some juicy stuff and some stuff that's really been aligning with us lately. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go for it. And this is one that Usually, you know, we have topics that we have, you know, past stories about or like ideas, a vision, whatever. But this one, it was like the idea we've known, but there's been examples of it that have, been, that have happened like the past two weeks. Yeah. There's an unbelievable amount of, of examples of what we're going to talk about right here yeah. about being delusional and just like really going for it. And like, yeah, you know, there's like, we'll get into it. Yeah. This talk, this podcast is like, we're what we're talking about we're going through in real time right now yeah like we're, we're experiencing it and it it's it's really fun too because as much as we're going to share with the audience about you know really going big and being delusional we're having to do that ourselves right now mm -hmm. so it's we're on this journey with everyone who's listening to it right now and also i want to piggyback off of last episode i don't know if you remember but we set um intentions. goals and intentions oh, for like the, the next the three weeks was it the beliefs? It was the beliefs. I think mine was was setting better boundaries, which it's amazing because when you set an intention for life, at least for me, what I've noticed is opportunities arise that force you to, to initiate that and mm. actually dive into your intention. So yeah. setting boundaries for me was one thing that I don't have a good, or I don't, I don't do well is setting boundaries with um, clients and money and like doing favors for people or when somebody asks me if they if i for a favor or whatever i feel obligated to do it for free at a low price or whatever yeah. so when i set the intention to set healthier boundaries within that um there was opportunity after opportunity that popped up that that's is the right me. that's the right word opportunity uh, yeah. but let me a little caveat here let me throw in Sometimes that opportunity doesn't look or feel like an opportunity at the time. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's a trigger or it's a challenge or it's an obstacle that comes up, but it is the opportunity for you to face that fear and overcome it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I've been working on. So I think even subconsciously I was working on the intention because I kind of forgot that we set the intentions last yeah. episode, but for whatever reason, um, and there's a backstory that we'll get into yeah. that led to that. But that's kind of the update from last episode. Yeah. Mine was to the limiting belief was that of permission syndrome, but for mm -hmm. like the higher levels of like where I'm currently at, it's like, yeah, it's like, I'm a boss. I don't need permission. But then mm -hmm. like those elite mastery levels that are in my future of like, oh, like I need permission for that for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And and so that was mine of overcoming that limiting belief, which I feel like that's something that I've really been focusing on lately is like the, yeah, it's becoming more and more simple. I'm actually realizing and, mm -hmm. and understanding that like I decide everything. I claim who I am. I claim what I want to be. And then I do it. Like there's no, there yeah. never will be permission. Well, not only that, I love like, you have so many stories like this where somebody asks you, to do something for them. Hey, can you, like, I heard you're creative. Can you do some construction in my house? And you're like, perfect, dude. I already have a team. I got it down. Like we'll be there. Oh, Hey, can you help me film this online course? You're like, of course I've done it multiple times. I got a team. Yep. Even though with both stories, you've had absolutely nothing, <laughs> no experience and no team. And you just set it and yeah. did it. Like just figured it out along the way. Yeah. You were delusional, delusional enough to accept it believe in yourself that you'll figure it out along the way. And now you have like these fun stories to prove to yourself totally. that it works. Yeah, dude. And I think it goes to for, I mean, people have heard this before and we've talked about this, but 
Um, if you haven't noticed the topic for today is like being delusional, being mm-hmm. fucking delusional. 100%. Um, and part of that goes back to the story of burning the boats. So if people don't know this story, there was, oh, I want to say 1500s, uh, a guy by the name of Andrew Cortez. I don't know if I have the first name right, but the last name is Cortez. And basically they were coming from Spain to Mexico, um, these conquistadors to really conquer all of like Mexico. And when they came over on these ships, they came to like Mexico. And when they got there, because Mexico was really prosperous and abundant mm-hmm. and had all these great things that the Spaniards wanted. But when they got there, it was like a <laughs> like a full army within Mexico. And so they pulled up their boats onto the beach. And, and I'm paraphrasing here, so I'm sure I'm missing details. But as they pulled up onto the beach, their, you know, their boats, just all of these soldiers and Spaniards coming up. They then kind of stood there waiting for their captain's command of what to do. But as they were there, like in fear, knowing that they were like walking into like almost like a slaughter. Mm -hmm. And so they're standing there on the beach and the captain gives the command and he says, all right, now burn the boats. And they're like, what are you talking about? Like, we just got here. That's our only way home. And he's like, exactly. Burn the boats. And he's like, you're insane. So they ended up going and, and putting holes in and then burning every single boat so that their only option of returning home was to conquer Mexico. Mm. They had to conquer it. And so we'll hear the phrase like burn the boats, which Mm -hmm. means get rid of all plan Bs, remove them. All safety nets that you have, all kind of safety outs or exits of like, if, if this doesn't happen, I have this backup, burn them all. Because then you are forced to figure out a way to make it happen. And it's either like billions or body bags, right? Mm -hmm. Either like I am going to accomplish my vision that I'm setting out to accomplish or I'm going to die trying. That's what burn the boats means. Fail gloriously. Fail gloriously. So I have a little personal example of just that. So a few months ago, I realized I needed a little bit more stability with money in my life. Just, you know, everybody does. And, you know, planning to move out and, and all that good stuff. So I just got a seasonal jo- job up at um, the Sundance Mountain Resort here in Utah. Mm-hmm. If you guys know what that is. And I was getting paid 15 an hour, <laughs> which at first I was like, <laughs> you know, I'll do it for the money, whatever. <laughs> but as like the, you know, the weeks went by, I've only been doing it for two months now. But as the weeks go by, I'm like, this is not where... I want to be because I know and, that I have a lot. And keep in mind, w- with that job, having a whole arsenal of video skills and all these other <laughs> yeah, skills. For real, though, I could be making so much more money doing yeah. other stuff. But for whatever reason, I was like, just the idea of that stability was appealing at the time. Mm-hmm. Now it's not, right? So I was there and like, we, I've, had, I've had like thoughts where I'm like, okay, I'm not going to be here for much longer. And we had like a a night where we were just talking and planning um, our vision of what we want to do, Talon and I, of what we want to accomplish in life, our skills, our goals. Like basically we created an entire vision of what we want to do with our life. And then looking back on the jobs that we had, the one that I was at, I was like, that is nowhere near the path that I need, that I need to be on to accomplish this. So I had that realization. And then the next day I went to work and they gave me a raise. I was like, okay. I mean, like, I'm not going to be here for much longer, but I'll take the raise. It's like, how much is the raise? 50 cents. I was like, you're shitting me. <laughs> I was like, whatever. I'm not going to be here longer. So I went out to the car, my truck at work, and picked up two quarters. And I was like, this is how much they value me at. And I was kind of mad. I was like, they value me this much? And then I, st- I like took a step back and I'm like, I only value myself this much if I stay. Mm. So put in my two weeks and that's burning the boats. Yep. Because I don't really have a plan B besides the video stuff. But like that was my stability when in the first place I shouldn't have been there. Yeah. You know, I should have been on the path where it's like 100% on, on the vision. Yep. But it was interesting. It was like a first like, you know, initial like burn all the boats in a little way yeah. to continue on the vision. It reminds me of the podcast we just did last week on self-worth of when Brene Brown did that study and the only common thread between all these people that had a high level of self-worth 
is that they believed they were worthy. Mm -hmm. They just decided it and they believed it. And I think that's such a powerful story and experience because it showcases that you get what you tolerate. Yeah. You literally do. And so many people play victim and they're like, why is this happening happening to me? And this happened and I have this job and they don't treat me right. They don't pay me well enough. And it's like you said, it's like, well, who's the one that's actually enabling that? Mm -hmm. You. And it's always you. It's always the self of like, we are either in victim mode or creator mode. Mm -hmm. You know, which one do you choose to be in? And that will determine what you really tolerate. Dude. And what's funny is how quickly the universe reacts to your um, commitment. So I decided, you know, right, as I, right after I put in my two weeks, I'm like, okay, it's video like 100%. I've been doing video in the background, but kind of like didn't want to use my passion for work because I, I was afraid I was going to lose the passion. But then I realized you could do both. Mm. You could film what you're passionate about and make money doing it. And so in, in the back of my mind, I decided that video was going to be full time. And, but I didn't tell anybody. Literally didn't bring it up. Didn't even tell my family, nothing. But as soon as I put in my two weeks at Sundance, I had like eight to 10 people randomly reach out to me about video stuff, which I haven't had anybody reach within, out to me. Within like 48 hours. Really? And yeah. it was like, like big people, big projects, um, smaller ones too, that were the opportunity to help me set those boundaries of like, no, I'm only going to focus on my vision, right? Well, dude, that's the whole irony of this is that not only did the universe respond, right? Fortune favors the bold mm -hmm. and coming back with these video gigs, but S like sneakily put into those video gigs were a few that were testing your boundaries mm -hmm. of, of your struggle with money and clients. Yep. And, and one of them specifically was just a lower gig one where it's like they wanted to do trade or do low payment. And it was literally testing you, forcing you to see if you would set that boundary or not. Yeah. So, and it is, it's beautiful. Like there's opportunity and everything, you know, yeah. and the scarcity mindset part of me, was like, oh, I can do this quick gig and make what I would have made in three weeks at this job. Yeah. But it's like, no, what do you really want? Because yeah. when you cut out everything that is just taking up your time, you're creating space for the bigger things that you are setting your intention to actually achieve. Like right? if, if my time was taken up by, you know, a thousand dollar gigs, I mean, it's like good enough money that I could survive. But it's not like the quarter million documentary projects that I'm like aiming towards yeah. and even bigger eventually, you know? Yeah. And you can get caught in the trap of like falling for those thousand dollar gigs in this situation because it's better than the 50 cent raise. Yep. But it's not your delusional ideal dream. A hundred percent. And I'm not saying you can't use those as stepping stones, right? For sure you will in some circumstances, but it's never actually settling and getting caught in the trap of like, oh, this is what I'm worth. Yeah. It, it's thinking that's what delusional. I think this, this is why this is such a fascinating conversation because even when we think about be delusional, we still put a ceiling on it. Still. Right? Right. Oh, be delu Okay, I'll quit my job and get some uh -huh. bigger gigs. And it's like, no, be delusional. Like 10 Xing, 20 Xing, mm -hmm. like, that's what delusional means. And it's not even, we're, we're not even concentrating or worried about actually accomplishing that. It's that setting that in motion shifts the energy so that you have to adapt and then mm -hmm. you will accelerate and grow. And even if you don't hit that, you will hit a goal much further than you would have if you didn't set that. It's like shoot for the moon, land amongst the stars. Totally. But like 10x, when we say delusional, we really want you guys to understand it. It's like, like 10 X what you think your delusional limit is. Yeah. Right? Being, being delusional is literally taking your 10 year goal, your 10 year vision and being like, how can I accomplish this in six months? Not really though. That's what being delusional means. And it's like so bonkers that it, it scares you. It terrifies you. And in setting that and saying that you feel like an imposter and you feel like it's impossible. Mm -hmm. And that, that's where it's so juicy. That's where it's so great because then it all of a sudden lays the runway for who you need to become to achieve that. And then you have the path ahead of you set 
for what you can do. And then you're no longer comfortable. You're facing fears. You're constantly growing. Mm -hmm. Like everything is placed before you that you need to do once you become delusional. Dude, and we've been going through this, right? When, when you start setting these goals and start setting these intentions, visions, and putting them out to the world, people will look at you and be like, bro, that's like, why are you wasting your time trying to accomplish that? Yeah. And we both have had people talk to the, talk, talk to us and almost like shit on the idea of Althea, which mm-hmm. we've talked about kind of briefly in the past, but Althea, the vision of Althea, and when we explain it, it is so delusional mm-hmm. that when we put it out to the universe or even tell our friends, they're like, I mean, good luck. Yeah. And I got to bring something up here, which just came to my mind, which is really important in being delusional with your vision and your goals of what you want to do in life. There still has to be some connection to them in the form of belief, Mm -hmm. even though it's delusional, some small part of you, even if it's 1%, some small part of you has to believe it's possible. Yep. Other, otherwise nothing will actually happen because there's no actual emotional um, investment into it. There's, there's no skin in the game. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes Althea so beautiful <laughs> is that it's so delusional. And I don't just think like 1% of me thinks it's possible. 100% of me believes that we will pull it off. Like 100% of me. And that's Same. why it's so exhilarating because mm-hmm. like it is so big. It is so audacious. It is so futuristic and it's so also beyond my skill sets a lot of these things but yeah i believe it's completely possible Mm -hmm. and so you do need to have that connection like in in being delusional it's not that you need to be like realistic or pragmatic it's that you just have to believe there has to be some ounce of belief in it because the belief is what pulls you if you have like the the motivation that pushes you you're only being moved but like being pulled by a vision is you're, you're being pulled forward. So it's not like you're pushed from the past. It's you're being pulled by the, by the future. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I think a good foundation lesson is like, like I said at the beginning, you had these experiences throughout, you know, the past decade of having that delusional mindset and accepting gigs that other people wouldn't. They'd be like, I have no skill set for that. Yeah. But it's how you act in the small things is how, how you do one thing is how you do everything, right? Yeah. It's one of my favorite quotes because it just sticks. It is what it is. And so with that, it's like you proved to yourself that you're willing to just like, even on small things, just figure it out. Yeah. And it's when we get caught up in our own mind of like, okay, I need to avoid all mistakes because this is new to me. I need to like stay within my comfort zone and try to like, you know, maneuver my way around this obstacle and and do this and say this and lie here. But really that's not the fastest way from point A to B. Mm. It's just picking it and walking the straight line. Yeah. And it, it's just saying, okay, I'll do it. I'll try. Yeah. And, and that going back to the belief, it's, it's not only having belief in your delusional vision, but first and foremost, belief in yourself. Mm-hmm. The, the reason why I'm able to pull off things like that in industries that I've never been in is because I have thousand percent believe in myself. And you know what? Like, I'm also okay if I fail. Mm -hmm. Like, I've created a very healthy relationship with fear and failure in my life. Like, I've failed so much. And I've, and at times in my life, I've been trapped in so much fear and darkness that it's like, it's all become so comfortable to me. Mm -hmm. Not, not like comfortable of like not facing the fear, but like having that relationship of facing it, even if there is failure. And I think that's where it becomes powerful. Like when you truly believe in yourself, Mm -hmm. you believe that you can do anything, but also you believe that like, even if you fell, you can still get, get back up and continue forward. And that is like in creating this delusional vision, you have to create a safe space for failure. Mm -hmm. Failure has to be okay. It has to be part of the plan. You know, one of the stories that actually comes to my mind, there's a guy by the name of Tom Mm Bilyeu. He was the founder of, um, uh, Quest Nutrition sold that for three billion. I think it was. Really? Yeah, he was the founder of Quest Nutrition. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and now wow. he's the founder of Impact Theory. Yeah. So anyway, he shares this story of how when he was going to build Impact Theory, I believe it was, he sat down with people that were already in the industry because he was going from protein bars all the <laughs> way to like digital media, uh-huh. and he sat down and he asked some of these professionals. He said, "I need you to tell me." 
every way that I'm going to fail with this. Really? Yes. And he got all this feedback from all these professionals and people in the industry that were like, well, this is, you're going to fail in this and you're going to fail in this and fail in this. And that gave him then the awareness to know what to look for, what strengths he needed, how, mm-hmm. what people he needed to bring onto the team. And he hyper-focused on, on the failure so that he could implement that into his plan of success. Because he knows Jeez. that failure is part of it. Yeah. And so in being delusional with our visions, I think it's good for people to know that create create space and create safety for failure because yep. that's part of it. In my opinion, in speaking about fear and like and, and failure, because failure stems from fear, right? Yeah. It's it's the fear of failure. It's even like the fear of death that that's, you know, in, in that fear as well. But I think the big part of holding that space for the failure and for the fear is knowing that the only antidote to fear is action. It's the only antidote. And so when it comes down to really being delusional and accomplishing these grand visions, you just have to decide, just pinpoint, get really clear on what you want to accomplish and then just move, mm-hmm. go, just freaking go Mach 5 and do everything you can while staying in flow and moving and pivoting and falling and failing and iterating and then moving again and then re-correcting and adapting and pivoting and then like it, it's just this constant process. I think mm-hmm. I think sometimes we think that like I'm guilty of this. We th- we think sometimes that it's this linear path that like you start with A and then you make your way to Z. Mm-hmm. And it's just not at all like that. It's like loops and spirals and spins and you're failing and then you're succeeding and then you're failing again and you're reiter- reiterating and mm-hmm. like it's this whole entire path of like just this marathon of adapting and really just moving. And so I think we just have to decide, like get clear on a vision of what you want and then just move towards it. And we we work it up in our minds. Like I think the fear comes from when we psych ourselves out by waiting too long to do it, right? Like going up to a girl to ask her for a number. Mm -hmm. It's like when we psych ourselves out, but really it goes back to what we always say, just simplicity. It's like if you want to start a business, just like start moving in that direction. Not trying to create this huge vision and then like just sitting there with the vision. But it's like, oh, okay, then what's the first step? What's a small step? What can I do, you know, 1% pivot to get to my goal? It's just the simplicity in the idea of action will get you results. Mm -hmm. Failure is a result as well. It's a a lesson, right? So it's like, it's just move. And it it just kind of, it's just really simple. And I think simplicity is also the antidote to fear as well. Yeah. Along with that, you know? Yeah, and like you're constantly learning. You're constantly, so like if if you set the goal to go talk to this girl, right? And to get her number or to go out with her and then you go ask her out and she rejects you, we think of that as failure. But what we don't realize is that just gave you confidence to go talk to the next girl. It's not that bad. That just gave you more courage. So then you go talk to the next one. Okay, she rejects you. Cool. Even even more. You're now getting used to the process. You're now adjusting your pickup line. You're feeling the energy a little bit more. Maybe you're picking a more opportune moment. Maybe like you're literally getting feedback. Failure is feedback. That's what it is. And so the more you just like just move, it's so simple. Like Mm -hmm. just move forward it literally doesn't even matter what you do as long as you're moving in the direction of your vision yeah and and i think an important note is not to attach yourself to anything or hang on to anything because if you attach yourself like i'm gonna get this girl's number i'm gonna date her she's gonna be my girlfriend and then she rejects you you're crushed and then you 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 (laughs) stick around that area and you're like but wait like i need to go after this i need to pursue this when reality it was just a, a stepping stone to a bigger vision that's big enough and delusional enough that there's like an infinite amount of steps. Mm-hmm. You cannot be attached to the first one. It's go to the first, then the second, then the third, but don't attach yourself to the first or think that yeah. you made it when you got to the yeah. first step. When it's like, there's a vision that you hold that is outside of any attachment. Yeah. Right. And I think I had, I had an epiphany of this one was like, when you set your vision outside of your comfort zone or your own limitations that you put on yourself when you set that vision outside of it meaning you don't think you can do it or you don't feel worthy enough to do it it forces yourself if you continue to move towards that vision it forces yourself to um, exit 
those boundaries and exit that the limiting circle that you put around yourself and then you get to the outside of it and you're like why have i been in this small circle playing a small game my whole life when there's an entire ocean and i was just in a fishbowl inside the ocean yeah it reminds me of like you know the example of like going to space if you have a dream of going to space then your whole focus needs to be on getting to space and feeling what it feels like to be in space not in leaving earth mm. right it's mm. a very subtle shift of attention right but you have to focus on getting to space rather than leaving earth one focuses on earth mm -hmm. which means you're gonna stay on earth because all you're focusing on is earth one focuses on space which means you will eventually get to space because that's all you're focusing on mm -hmm. where your attention goes energy flows so when you set that far out vision of what you want to accomplish and you just laser focus on that eventually over time you get pulled and magnetized towards it because the energy of that frequency literally takes you there mm -hmm. literally pulls you there that's the only thing the only energy that you're focusing on we can bring that same vision and bring it down to the first step of there's a job that you don't like instead of focusing on man i need to leave this job that i don't like redirect your vision and your focus and, and turn your energy into i'm gonna live my best life and then when you say i'm gonna live my best life the first step of leaving a job you don't like isn't that big of a step yeah because you're not thinking about it as like this like because if you're if your only goal was to leave the job you don't like th that's a huge step in your mind but when the vision is i'm gonna live my my best life the first minuscule step is to leave the job because that's obvious yeah. you know i think that shift was yeah that's brilliant well and i i think like w <laughs> a little empathy here like in, in discussing this conversation we understand that like this is really difficult for like a lot of people and a lot of people are in super practical or maybe difficult situations and they think this sounds crazy but here's the thing is that to really be delusional and create something big in this world you're gonna at some point you're going to have to let go mm -hmm. you're going to have to just trust the universe and have faith which by default means some of the paths you're going to take or some of the maybe thoughts or inspirations that come to your mind aren't going to make logical sense mm -hmm. right leaving your job to go to something that's actually not there yet right you didn't have gigs they weren't lined up yet yeah so to then leave your job to go to a non-existent thing doesn't make sense people would say that's not logical that's irresponsible that's mm -hmm. impractical how are you going to pay your bills how are you going to do this and that's like i think the the hardest hurdle of this whole be delusional topic is that there is going to be a phase where a lot of things you need to do to take that leap of faith logically aren't going to make sense and that's yeah. when it really builds up of like wow do i believe in myself enough that like even if this fails even if it flops i believe that i can get back up and rebuild after this yeah do i trust myself enough to do it yeah yeah, it's beautiful because a lot of it's not going to make sense at all it's kind of the concept of like when you're swinging from vine to vine it's like the idea and the logical mind is like grasp one before you let go of the other yeah but then you think about it it's kind of exhilarating to let go of everything and just see where you end and up and sometimes you have to and sometimes that means you fall but then you get back up you're like okay that wasn't as bad as i thought Let's climb back up and get going again leap in the net will appear you yeah, know, one of my big. favorite books that I strongly recommend everyone read is called The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra. And in it, he talks about detachment and he says, your whole job is just to put the manifestation out there, to create the vision, to know what you want, decide you're going to get it, but then let go of the how. Completely hmm. let go of the how. Let go of how it's going to show up, how it's going to come about, and don't attach to how it's going to come into your life because most often than not your vision is going to come about in a different way than you thought it might look different but it will have the same energy dude when you enter the illogical mindset that people like hate on in society when you enter into that illogical realm there's illogical possibilities that exist yeah because the opportunities will just it's just how the universe universe works yeah. And if you don't believe it, try it.
Yeah. With 100% faith, because if, if you still have like that one boat that you didn't burn, it's a message to yourself saying, you're like, oh, well, I got to be saved because I don't trust myself fully. That's exactly what you're saying. Plan. You know, and, and if you don't trust yourself, then trust in a higher power in the universe and mm-hmm. God and in, in something. I, and I think that's why religion is so big for a lot of people yeah. because it helps to give them that faith to move forward, which would have been a lot harder on their own. Yeah. So again, choose beliefs that empower you. Yes. Believe in yourself, believe in something higher, believe in something great, believe in anything that's going to help you to move towards your, your greatest, most ideal life. Dude. How you wanted to go into the vision of Althea? Yeah, let's do that. Because we can end on our note of Be what delusional. our delusional mindset is. Which really, to me it. now, isn't even that delusional. To be At honest. all, bro. Because so we, we we're, seeing to, it. we're seeing it work now. Yeah. Because now that we've had experiences of like literally leaping into the abyss, having no nets or anything, we're entering into that illogical realm, the magic realm, it's like I'm seeing it day in and day out with manifestations and crazy synchronicities. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, we'll dude, go into it. And I got to say something before we go into it. Like, just thinking about this, the logical world is so boring. It's so mundane. Stuck in your nine to five job, doing the same safe routine every day. Like, wake, like after a while, your soul just kind of dies. And then it's just like, dude, I would rather burn and just die falling going for something big Mm -hmm. then live one more monotonous day and so i I think a lot of people are are forced to that point of just being like you know what even if i do fail and burn being delusional and trying to live the life i want to live it's got to be better than what i'm doing now (laughs) dude (laughs) and 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 sometimes you got to be pushed to that point if you're feeling it right now this is a sign Sometimes it feels good to just be punched in the face by the universe. Really, though, and just letting go of everything. Yeah, realizing because then you realize there's such. It all comes down to this: there is a greater plan beyond, beyond our comprehension. Mm -hmm. Like this universe, whoever is running this whole show, (laughs) is so beyond intelligent and is so beyond compassionate and loving that it's like once you actually let go and take that leap you will just be stunned at the amount of compassion that follows you and that lifts you up. And what we, what we say is magic is really just an everyday occurrence. Yeah. When you really can see it from the perspective and what we're going to do without the magic and the mundane. magic. Yeah. Let's lay this baby out. Let's do so it. I'll, I'll give a little background kind of on Althea just a tiny bit and then go straight in, into the vision. You know, um, Althea has a consciousness of its own full on and it needed to, it was very clear to me that there was this energy of healing that needed to come into this world. But uh, flow requires form. And in order for energy to come into this 3D reality, it has to come into form. It has to come into a container, a vessel that can hold that energy. Mm-hmm just like our bodies are a container for your soul, right? And so that is Althea. And so we started to build this container that could bring in this healing energy. Althea comes from the Greek word Althea, which means healer or wholesome. And so that was the whole idea is that all of this really is birthed from a lot of experiences in my life of darkness where all the periods of darkness were I was alone. There was no, I didn't know what resources to go to. I didn't have anyone who could understand me. I didn't know where to go. It was so foreign, like just the ultimate despair. Yeah. So then it became this craving, this like obligation of like, what is going on in the world? Like everyone, like a lot of people are breaking, like mental illness is through the roof. Divorce is through the roof. Like our division has never been so strong. Racism and hatred and like it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, And so for a lot of people, you start to focus on all of those behaviors, on the hatred, on the violence. But the real question that we're not asking is like, why the pain? Where's the pain coming from? And you start to realize all of this is happening because of unhealed, unexpressed pain. Mm -hmm. And we know that healing happens in the presence of an empathetic witness. And so community has to be involved within that healing. So then it became the goal of like, it's, it's not, the problem is all the violence and the hatred and the division and the war. These are outcomes Mm -hmm. of the problem of the root problem. And that root problem is that people 
don't know how to heal. They don't know how to access it. They don't know how to go about it. They, they don't, it's just so foreign. And so Althea, the ultimate mission and goal is to provide easier access to healing, to hold space for people so that they can heal themselves. Yep. I am not a guru. You are not a guru. I am not a healer. I can't fix anybody. If anybody ever comes to you and says they can heal you, run. Because no one can. You can only be your own healer. But what I can do is I can hold space for you and I can guide you with certain modalities and certain ways to help you heal yourself or to match you to certain practices that resonate and speak with your soul. So that's the whole goal of Althea is to create a massive platform, educational, that can provide easier access to healing through alternative methods. The, the, whole, uh, the whole medical system right now, a lot of it is broken. The education system is broken. Mm -hmm. The political system is broken. And so we have to revamp from the inside out a lot of these systems. So moving forward, education is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. So through education, we will be creating all of these different alternative methods that people can access to heal themselves. Breath work, meditation, Reiki, acupuncture, foot zoning, therapy, energy work, you name it. Any alternative method that people can tap into to start to heal themselves. That, that was the first issue. The second one was in the access part. It's like when you go to therapy nowadays, it's $200 a session. Wow. And, it, and if you're struggling mentally in your life and your life's falling apart, most of the time, statistically, you're also broke financially mm -hmm. because they're all holistic. So when your emotional mental health drops, your financial health drops. And so when people are broken, they don't have $200 to pay twice a week for therapy. Are you kidding me? We're getting robbed. The, the whole system is robbing people. And so we had to find a way to provide easier access to people. And so that comes through the first phase, which is online courses. Mm -hmm. So by creating these advanced online healing courses, such as Breathwork, people can buy these one time and have access to it in perpetuity to learn these skills and be able to heal themselves. And for the price of one therapy session, they can buy this course that they can also use for family and friends and literally start to spread this healing across the world. And it's all digital. So no matter where you are in the world, Zambia, freaking mm -hmm. in Mongolia or Africa or here in the US, as long as you have access to the internet, which that is now being accelerated, you can now have access to healing. So that solves the problem of the money, of the access, and then of course, of curating the best teachers in the world mm -hmm. who you can trust. Althea in the future will become a stamp of trust. When people hear the name Althea, it'll be so pure, it'll be so untainted because it's not me. It's mm -hmm. a different consciousness. We're just building the vessel for that energy to come through. 100%. And it'll be so pure that when people hear the name Althea, they will trust it. They will know that every teacher on that platform, everything that comes through that will be pure. All of this is just phase one. Phase one. That's just phase one. It's just a model. All we're, all we're creating is because, like you said, every industry, every part of the world needs a revamp in a spiritual essence and a healing essence in it just a, a better loving essence yeah. so all we're doing and you know we'll accomplish this i know this we're creating a model of how we want the world to be of how we think the world can be a loving more positive healing place mm -hmm. and that's that's the goal is just creating that model and, and proving that you know there's there's better ways to do this yeah and so it's phase one, but just the delusional aspect of a lot of people don't think it's real. Real. We've yeah. had conversations with friends, family who don't think it's real. So hopefully through what we can do, we can show people that no, it is possible to create an education structure through actual school, online courses, whatever you name it. Show them that it's possible and almost like, show them what else is possible. It's like, oh, it's like they did this. They've talked about doing this. Like, let's hope they accomplish yeah. it because, you know, yeah, it's just creating that, that model of what we want the world and, and how we see how the world can be better. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it will be a model that's replicable, scalable, and sustainable. Mm-hmm. All three of those are perfectly ne- needed. They're, they're, it'll, it'll merge harmoniously with nature. Everything we do is really copied from nature mm-hmm. to create this like this this synarchy, this ecosystem where other we blend with other businesses and other people and other things that can bring it in. But it's all it's all about the energy. Like anyone who works for Althea will be a professional space holder. Mm -hmm. That's what we are. We hold space for people so they can purge their own emotions and fears and darkness and have that healing in those safe containers. And And this will go throughout each industry first starting with education, but eventually it'll merge into music. It'll it'll merge into food and nutrition. It'll merge into architecture. Althea will have its own architecture branch. It'll merge into fashion and apparel. It'll merge into all of these different sectors, carrying this energy with it, creating a spiritual model by which through tapping into our spiritual abilities and gifts, we can raise the frequency of the world. I mean, we're talking about like, full on like Harry Potter shit here of like <laughs> creating spiritual schools. That's that's eventually phase two, possibly phase three of where these courses and these teachers will eventually about, you know, three years from now, we'll have an actual school, Althea Academy, which will be the first school. And it'll house, you know, zero through basically ninth grade for these kids, but zero through seven is all learning about themselves and this self-awareness and tapping into their spiritual abilities and then bringing back the model of mentorship and apprenticeship. And that way they're learning through osmosis and getting straight into the world. There, there's no more fucking college. That's done for. There's a, there's the, there won't even really be high school in the future because mm-hmm. these kids that are coming into the world are so beyond intelligent. They're so much more in tune. They're so much more intact with their intuition and with their capabilities they're quicker they're faster they understand better they're sharper right like we can shit on the kids and gen z all we want but it's clear they're they're geniuses in a lot of respects and so it's learning to create containers for that so althea academy will be the school that will teach these different healing arts these Mm -hmm. different abilities and and to the point to where we're then purging all this trauma from these generations so eventually we can create this model of the new earth all based around education of like who we are and our self-awareness and that's powerful that's part one dude and listen like if i didn't have that vision if we weren't creating what we are creating the putting my two weeks at sundance would have seemed so much bigger than it is but it's like that that step seems so minuscule because the vision is so big and it's like do that with your, with your personal life. You know, like if there's a place that you want to be or you don't even think it's possible, set it and then realize that the steps that you thought were huge to get there are just a step on that path. Yeah. And it's just simple. Yeah. From A to, a to B. Yeah. Obviously, there's the turmoil in the middle that we always talk about. But yeah, dude, if that, hopefully that was delusional enough for you guys. <laughs> that vision yeah, of Yeah. That's really only a small part of there's even so many parts of it that I haven't even talked about and probably won't until it's like the right timing to really bring it in. But there there's so many parts to it. And, and I'll give people an example, for example, with like architecture, if you think that's very like outside of the lane of Althea, you know, we spend the majority of our time in our homes. Mm-hmm. But what we don't think about is the energy circulation of our homes. And we're moving in a world towards more energy sufficient homes but we're thinking in terms of like green energy, which is great. And we have to be ecological, um, but we gotta think in terms also of personal and human energy. And when you start to build houses that actually put you in a box, it starts to actually put psychological limitations and restrictions on your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. And energy actually can't circulate that well within a square. That's why back in the day, if you look into tribes and villages, they lived in domes. They lived in circular villages because in a circular dome, it's the perfect shape to continue to circulate around to create higher vibration and energy. Mm. So this even goes into like levels of, of engineering and like thermodynamics. And this is all important because if we're trying to really create this new earth, 
everything will eventually be revamped from the inside out, 100%. including architecture, including the food we eat, including the clothes we wear. Well, dude, it also goes back to the idea that you're saying of Althea, everything that we create will be synonymous with nature. Yeah. Like think about how, how like when you look at the honey, uh, honeycomb, like a, a, a beehive, how like the sacred geometry in that and how efficient the energy is moving through uh, their like home it's unbelievable. You won't believe it. If you look it up, it's like on, it's like the, the most efficient way to build their uh, home as it could be because yeah. it's just nature. So it's not necessarily saying we're going to build a honeycomb home, but like just the idea that nature has it right. Yeah. And building off of nature will obviously help in all aspects. Well, and it all starts with like the reason why the, the bees are, are so essential, not only for us as humans, but their actual infrastructure is because they have a universal mind. They can actually tap into and feel the energy of the queen bee. And they all revolve around the mind and the energy of the queen bee. So even though it's thousands of individual bodies, it's actually one mind with bees. Mm. And they literally think they're telepathic, they think on the same wavelength, so they move in the same way. And the queen bee through that one mind directs all of the energy. Yeah. And that's what we're moving towards. That's what remembering is. It's coming back to the one mind. And as we connect more with one another, create more communities, become more loving, be, become more unified, really start to be more vulnerable, break down walls, we're coming back to the hive mind. Mm -hmm. We're coming back to the one mind of moving in unison, of realizing that we never were disconnected. We're all one. We're pure universal awareness. And as we start to shift that spiritually first, because manifestation happens first in the spiritual, then in the 3D, yep. as we start to shift those spiritually first and create that love, then the form will start to adapt and move with it. And that's Althea. Dude. And we've seen, we've seen that on little scales with documentary projects and other video projects and oh dude so unbelievable well, going back stuff. to the not like letting go of the how this is the perfect example am i an architect no <laughs> am i like have i studied food industry no i haven't done any of these things but as we move through these phases the people that are experts in this show up like certain people that we need to connect to all of a sudden reach out to us or we'll have on the podcast as guests or we'll run into like every connection that I need to build Althea and the people to be there show up in the perfect timing. And that's trust. Dude. Oh, <sighs> there it is. So, it, dude, if I have one just freaking gold nugget to leave everybody, it's just be fucking delusional. Like, and it is that simple. Just go for it. Take the risks, face your fears, and start living a life that makes you come alive. Really Just go that. for it. Dude, and delusional should be our normal normal mindset. Should be. But like you said, the, we put ourselves in boxes with our house and the way we want to express ourselves. We hide things and, and fit things into the boxes where they shouldn't be it's all flowing and we're, we're sectioning sectioning it off it's the way we're programmed it's the way we're programmed it's like being delusional the, the reason why we call it delusional is because it's so foreign to us it's so outside of us but it really should be the way we think it's anything is possible how can we do this in the best way possible totally. make the most amount of memories and enjoy life the best we can Totally. We, I mean, we had another podcast that we were on the other day with the boys, but that was one of the things I said is that like, it's for me, this is a game of spiritual disruption. I want to see how many things I can disrupt so that it shakes it enough to be able to put different energy back into it. Yeah. And so, you know, when, when we're so used to this way of life, like you said, something outside of that box seems delusional. And yet when you do that more and more, it becomes more normal. Mm-hmm becomes more free and those walls start to break down and yeah it just, it just all starts flowing again yep as it should be so there you go thanks for tuning in everybody don't forget to rate us and review us on spotify apple podcasts follow us on youtube althea society go check out our tiktok and be until delusional. next time be delusional peace peace